Hi, good morning to everyone. And thank you for having us here today at ASHI Talk 2022. I'm here to uh, introduce you our talk, ASHI Corvolt and Jenkins. And uh, we want to share with you how we are leveraging on uh, AWS uh, services to empower our hybrid scenario. So how we integrated uh, Jenkins with the ASHI Corvolt. And this is a real true story. <laughs> There was a time uh, where InfoSec team was requesting more visibility of secrets usage in pipelines. Credentials were stored into the Jenkins controller nodes. Jenkins uh, was and is currently on-premise. And the opposite, <laughs> actually what is the, on the cloud side, so it's in, in AWS. And in the past, we're not integrated. So we were struggling with the secret zero challenge uh, for uh, using app roles in Jenkins and providing a proper identity to the pipelines. And for ourselves, for our pipelines, we were starting also with personal tokens for accessing Vault through our pipelines. In this talk, we will gonna cover the trust between Jenkins and Vault. So the way we are currently injecting app role credentials using a serverless solution and solving our secret zero challenge. After that, uh, we will discuss also how that is reflected into our Vault uh, uh, governance framework, how we changed our company processes around, uh, uh, for example, the way we authenticate our pipelines uh, to AWS, how this, is, it, this has been reflected also into our code base, so how we solve the um, the way to scale the solution across the company through a Jenkins shared library. And finally, we we'll share with you also how to rely again on uh, um, pre-existing IAM roles. So how we integrated also Ashikor Vault with the cloud uh, governance within YNAP. So stay tuned with us. And hi, I'm Pier Marco Zerbini, Senior DevOps Engineer from YNAP DevOps Platform team. And who with me today, there is also Kevin the Notaris. Kevin. Hello, guys. So I'm Kevin. I'm a DevOps engineer here in Wana. I've been working here for about six months. And so uh, we have quite a lot of things to cover in this presentation. So bear with us. <laughs> let's <laughs> and, go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's do it. OK. So we decided to uh, split our agenda in five um, chapters. So let's move on, uh, starting from the uh, YNAP system, then moving forward to AWS serverless solution for injecting uh, uh, pro credentials in Jenkins. Then we will go for the governance as code and the shared library. And finally, uh, step into the Vault and Cloud Governance uh, changes. And finally, in the end, uh, how InfoSec is now enjoying uh, the audit logs from Splunk. Okay, let's start from the YNAP ecosystem then. Uh, there is Jenkins and there is also Bitbucket that are uh, our main tools in terms of the platform capabilities. Especially for uh, Jenkins, uh, it's designed to be multi-tenant. So there is a multi-branch pipeline configuration in place. General purpose is worker node, generally speaking. And as a requirement for us during the uh, development of the Jenkins Vault integration, there was also the minimizations of Jenkins configurations in the uh, team that is currently owning the Jenkins uh, configuration management. So there are many controller nodes that uh, are linked with the Bitbucket projects. So in this example, there is Bitbucket project A and B associated to the Jenkins controller one and the Bitbucket project C and D associated to the Jenkins controller two. So if I, I am a developer that uh, uh, is coding uh, from uh, project A, my pipeline will run in Jenkins controller one. Moving to the Vault implementation instead, we have ASHICORP Vault Enterprise, so it can provide the namespace segregation. 
And uh, our tree structure is composed of three layers. The first one is the root namespace, where uh, usually the administrator access into. Then there are the central um, team namespace that uh, is what, in a, what we name company root namespace. So everything that is related to the stakeholders. So what we named the YNAP in our company. And the third layer is composed of um, all the namespace uh, consumed and owned by the team. In a picture, as you can see, uh, there is the um, tree structure here. And uh, I want to stress this uh, key point that even if uh, I will say we, as a uh, both administrators, access uh, uh, the root namespace for our applications, then we our secrets are stored into vault admin namespace. So we try to uh, use vault as a, an application team like each other. And another key point is that uh, we rely on OEDC for uh, people and uh, talking about pipeline, we need another authentication method that, that is APRO. The upper credentials for Jenkins uh, was a huge pain point for us because it was not possible to store uh, upper credentials at controller node, neither at into the uh, Jenkins uh, worker nodes. And um, we decided to uh, shift this concept uh, and uh, assign the approach into project level in Jenkins, that it means uh, a bit bucket project uh, into the code base, wrap it secret uh, and uh, move that uh, concept of Afro at pipeline level. It was not uh, a cost-effective solution for us. So here we go. This is... Here we can see from this picture that we designed a link between our namespaces that we will discuss later in the next topics. And uh, the main goal uh, in our design was to uh, link our Bitbucket projects to target namespaces in actual world. So in other words, if I am a developer from Bitbucket project A, my pipelines will run into Jenkins controller one, and I want to read my secrets from my own namespace. So why not Vault Admin namespace? So let's move forward to the way we solve this problem. First of all, we let's start from how we configure our Archicore Vault namespaces. We rely on Terraform in a pipeline, and we need access to AWS for, for storing our remote state into an S3 bucket. And in the past, we use our personal token for accessing the root namespace. The way we access AWS in the past was to rely on the Jenkins credential storage. So credentials were stored inside Jenkins. So we decided to develop uh, a tool, an internal tool for managing the trust between uh, Jenkins and uh, Ashcore Vault, and we named that Trust Manager. Trust Manager is an Ansible playbook that is mapping the bucket projects, namespaces, and uh, Jenkins controller nodes that we developed that into our on-prem ecosystem. And uh, running that from Jenkins pipelines, we uh, recognized pretty soon that it was a kind of chicken egg. So why do you, sh you should run a Jenkins pipeline for configure your Jenkins? So, and also uh, it was requested to insert our personal tokens at the pipeline time. So we decided to move all of this into AWS. And so we packaged everything into a Docker image through Paker. 
and uh, we defined a uh, live environment in Terraform for, uh, for defining a uh, ECS cluster and the Fargate task. And then we also decided to add a Volt agent on board of this Docker image for uh, simplify the way we access Volt from AWS. So instead of uh, um, performing all the STS uh, calls through AWS APIs, we decided to rely on the uh, perfectly working ASHICORP uh, agent and uh, just configure that for this purpose. So in order to run the trust manager, we need uh, those requirements. So we need a dedicated IAM role for that. And uh, that the IAM role need to, well, read what is in a bucket. So I didn't say before, but the Ansible inventory for the playbook is stored in a bucket in order to avoid to rebuild the image every time something is going to change in the Ansible inventory. So, so the Fargate runtime needs to access that bucket. And, and there is also the need to store data in CloudWatch for custom metrics and logs. So we have a running trust manager in AWS, but we need to access Vault from that. Let's see how to do that. We rely on AWS out method, providing access uh, into YNAP namespace to that uh, IAM role. So the previous, ex the previous described uh, IAM role. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we decided that also to um, rely on a short time lived token. So we don't need to renew those tokens. So it's just a fire and forget uh, task uh, in a Fargate. Um, the, the entity instead uh, is um, provisioned by the vault configuration. So it's already existing uh, also that uh, into Ashikor vault uh, into YNAP namespace. We decided also to choose the YNAP namespace since uh, the trust manager need to add the app roles across all the organizations, so all across all the namespaces for the application teams. OK, so the task manager now is able to uh, configure the uh, Vault namespaces, but uh, is uh, able to also create uh, the secret ID so it able to, is able to generate the credentials for accessing Ashcore Vault. The final step is to providing these credentials to the Jenkins pipelines. Through Jenkins API, we are able to inject the credentials into Jenkins controller nodes. And, uh, and finally, the namespace uh, should be already in place before adding credentials I mean, the APRO credentials into the target namespace. We are talking about now about the runtime of the uh, Fargate task that is uh, in charge of creating the APRO credentials and uh, refreshing that into Jenkins controller nodes. So we have a Fargate task here. We name it as manager that is scheduled every hour that is able to perform a login into YNAP namespace through AWS of method. Then it generates APRO credentials. It fetches the Jenkins API keys for accessing a uh, Jenkins APIs. So it then injects the credentials across all the Jenkins controller nodes at Bitbucket project level. That it means Jenkins uh, uh, project level. And finally, the outcome is stored into CloudWatch for troubleshooting and auditing. So that's all on my side. And uh, i pleased to hand over to Kevin for the next chapter.
Thank you, Pier Marco. So, uh, in the second part of the talk, uh, we are going to focus on how to leverage uh, all the different parts that uh, indeed Pier Marco just mentioned to uh, let pipelines authenticate to AWS using these upper credentials, which are ingested, injected by the trust manager. Uh, in particular, we are also going to uh, start to define a governance on different aspects of all these moving parts and then implement a, a Jenkins shared library, uh, leveraging all these moving parts and encapsulating and hiding these implementations details from the stakeholders. So in order for our bigger plan to work out, we first had to set some boundaries. So in particular, uh, we carved in stone the path where these AWS credentials can and must be stored inside our vault. Uh, this path can be divided into two main parts. The first, which is the green one, was, the was um, decided by vault administrators, namely us, and the InfoSec team. Uh, while the second part in blue uh, was defined by the InfoSec and the team, which actually gives the credentials to, uh, uh, which distributes the credentials to other uh, namespaces. So we can see an example here where the, uh, after the KV, we find the team giving the credentials, so their name, uh, their team name, uh, followed by AWS credentials, and then the AWS account name, which uh, will be the uh, identifier of the actual secret. Uh, also, bear in mind that this path exists in all namespaces, and as we saw earlier, uh, central teams are logging into the first layer, the uh, YNAP namespace, uh, to then be able to uh, provide secrets to all the child namespaces. And, and this is possible thanks to policy templating, uh, uh, leveraging the uh, metadata that we associated to the entities of uh, the central teams. Uh, it is also important to note the capabilities that different actors uh, actually have uh, on this path. So for example, the admin can just list the secrets the central team, which are those giving the credentials, can write secrets along with the possibility to update and even delete those secrets since they are actually managing these secrets. And also, uh, while the users, uh, they just need to list uh, those credentials uh, since these are, uh, are to be used only uh, in pipelines. So, uh, the team members are not allowed to uh, manipulate, to read these secrets. And then clear, there are the pipelines. So the, uh, the token which uh, the pipeline uses from authenticating by the app role injected by our trust manager can read these credentials. So in addition to this path, we clearly defined also a specific form of the keys Namely, um, we uh, define them to be username and password and not, I don't know, user and password or, or anything else that one uh, could decide them to be. So um, this is to, uh, to indeed be able afterward to leverage this consistency and implement uh, the library encapsulating this authentication. And, and also uh, from our naming convention of AWS account names, um, we are able to extract the environment. Uh, so for example, uh, the difference between a development account and a production one, we are able to extract that from the account name. And also, uh, clearly we have this namespace uh, slash Bitbucket projects the Jenkins uh, folder association defined as described by Pier Marco uh, before. Um, so let's start to first lay down the features that our shared library actually possesses. So um, it allows a seamless integration of AWS authentication using the credentials stored in Vault. So uh, in particular, this library is fairly easy to use since the stakeholder just had to uh, import the library in their Jenkins file. And then 
uh, leverage the, uh, the authentication function that we expose to them, uh, passing only the AWS account name as a parameter. And we'll see that later also. So this, uh, this library clearly encapsulates the authentication. And this will hide that from the stakeholder. So let's see in particular how uh, the library actually go through all these steps. So first of all, we determine the environment. Since we have multiple vault cluster, in this case, for example, one for the production and one for the non-production. So we need to first select which one to interrogate. And clearly also the Apple credentials have a different ID in the Jenkins credential storage. Then we extract the namespace, and this is also done through the upper credentials, in particular from the description. In the description, we encoded some metadata, which we are able to extract to get the theme space associated to that Jenkins project. Remember that all these, uh, these steps are done inside a Jenkins pipeline. So we are inside Jenkins. Then we can construct the vault path as explained before, and also Finally, we can authenticate to Vault. In this case, we use the Vault plugin, uh, which is installed in each Jenkins controller. And this will use the uh, upper credentials or trusted entity to authenticate to Vault and then to read the account name in the path that we constructed before. And finally, uh, the library can leverage these credentials to authenticate to AWS. So this approach is clearly a centralized way of handling AWS credentials via pipelines, and it is highly maintainable and no refactor clearly is needed from stakeholders in case of an authentication changes. <laughs> so at this point, uh, we have an authentication to AWS uh, via a shared library. We are going now to see how uh, we could do, um, uh, what actually we could do with that IAM role inside our pipelines. So our pipelines in, uh, in our company interact with AWS via what we call an IAM provisioning role. So this is e even before Vault. Uh, the pipelines will extract, well, actually used to extract the AWS credentials from the Jenkins credential storage, and then use these credentials to log in to AWS. And this clearly will give a valid session to the Jenkins. Now, after all the implementations of this shared library, we are shifting the, uh, the credentials from uh, the storage of Jenkins to HashiCorp Vault. So now uh, that we have, for example, a valid session uh, in a Jenkins pipeline, we can leverage this IAM role to actually authenticate to Vault using that I am role uh, with the AWS of method. So let's see how this uh, works. First of all, we log in via the app role credentials that the trust manager injects into Jenkins. Now bear in mind that these, uh, these credentials uh, have only read capabilities. Uh, then we read the AWS credentials, uh, logging into AWS. In particular, we are logging, in this case, into the account hosting Vault infrastructure uh, so that we will have a IAM role uh, suitable to provision resources inside Vault. So at this point, uh, our Jenkins will have a cool hat, uh, IAM role. So uh, using this role, it will log in again to Vault using the AWS Auth method. Now, uh, this time the token that will be returned uh, thanks to this login operation will be a token with right capabilities. And this will allow the pipeline to actually provision infrastructure or, or resources actually into Vault. Now, for all of this to work clearly, uh, there must be defined policies, entities, and aliases for these IAM provisioning roles. And uh, also, <laughs> this uh, uh, allowed us to stop inserting our personal token inside uh, these pipelines, which provisioned both namespaces. 
the fact that we log in two times, first with the app role and then with the AWS authentication method uh, is uh, uh, to separate the concerns of each uh, uh, credentials. So the app role just needs to read and the AWS out method will, uh, will give the right access. So this is important. Now, having defined a governance for the usage of these credentials uh, stored in both, we were able to create custom dashboards in Splunk uh, so that our InfoSec guys will benefit from a greater visibility and the possibility also to uh, monitor the usage of, for example, the credentials for AWS accounts. So let's take a look. The first graph that we are going uh, to uh, construct or to see um, is the one representing which namespaces are using AWS out method. So using the following query, which you can see on the screen, uh, and here we can see uh, which namespaces are used to, are accessed uh, through this uh, out method. So it's an important metric to, to look at. Also, it's interesting to see which Bitbucket projects are using the Jenkins app roles injected by the Trust Manager. So in this query, I'd like uh, you to focus on the, uh, the utilization that we make of the metadata. So in particular, we are using a custom metadata, for example, for the Bitbucket project. In this way, we are able to see which Bitbucket projects are actually using uh, the Jenkins uh, uh, Vault integration. Uh, thirdly, we, uh, we can see which namespaces our trust manager processes. So here we can see uh, the adoption of our product, uh, in particular, as we go through the onboarding process, uh, we add namespaces uh, to Vault, and also we had the mapping between Vault and the bucket projects and Jenkins. And while we add all these integrations, we have more uh, more namespaces, more um, more namespaces that pop up that will pop up in this uh, in this pie. So it is a nice metric to see the adoption rate of our product. And finally, we can see, uh, we can look at the, in my opinion, the coolest graph uh, between all these four and is the usage of the AWS credentials uh, uh, that are stored in both. So for example, we can leverage here the uh, path that we defined for the central teams to put their credentials. And for example, in this query, you can see that we use the KV data, central team path, central team name, WS creds, etc. So we use the path that we defined before, and we can extract the AWS accounts credentials that are fetched from Vault and that are then used to log in to AWS in the Jenkins pipeline. So this is a really important. Graph. So, guys, I leave the the word, the final recap to Pier Marco. Thank you all. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, let's try to recap here and uh, provide some takeaway also for our uh, viewers. So, we we've seen how to integrate. Jenkins and Dashcore Vault through a serverless solution and rely on AWS South method to provide access to Dashcore Vault. We share with you how we changed our mindset, mainly the company processes and how the uh, Vault adoption and governance had an impact on our company processes. Once uh, we changed our company processes, then we were able also to code that processes, writing a Jenkins shared library for scaling the solution across the company. And for ourselves, finally, we are now free from adding our personal tokens to our Jenkins pipeline. So we have an end-to-end -to -end, uh, pipeline 
in an automated fashion. And also InfoSec guys are very happy to have a colorful world into our Splunk dashboards. So thank you for watching us. And uh, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed.